June 4th, 1985, Los Angeles, California, United States. Swami Vishnu Devananda is interviewed. We're talking this morning with the flying Swami, Swami Vishnu Devananda, and uh, we've been talking about trying to get peace on earth in his ways by dropping flowers over various uh, war ridden, war ridden countries and instead of bombs. Before we went to break, I, I, I wanted to ask you then, what do you feel of our president's recent policies of having more arms and more missiles and more money spent on defense? See, I don't blame Reagan alone. See, not to me, now you need two hands clap. One hand you cannot make. So there is problem also other side of the <laughs> Atlantic Ocean also, you see. So I don't just take sides on anybody. I think I belong to human race. I want the whole human race to survive, not a Russians, not Americans, but everyone should survive, you see. But uh, Russian thing, they should survive. American thing, they should survive. That's the wrong idea. As long as this idea exists, there will be war, and there will be world will be destroyed within six minutes. That's what my, my whole purpose mm -hmm. of this talk, you see. How do you become a Swami? We have to go to a monastery and stay with the master, another great master name, as is called Swami Shivananda. I stayed two, 10 years with, with him. So 10 years you study and then he uh, helps you decide that you're ready and, and sends you out into the world to spread your message? Yes, yeah. then he initiated, he initiated the Swami. But uh, other people put the orange rope without having initiation, that's not right. Do yeah. you have to be Indian to be a Swami? No, anyone could. I, can women be Swami? Yes, yeah, but we have to come and learn and stay with us. But I could go and conceivably and learn and stay 10 years and come and, back? Uh, also, you can't get married, you cannot have wife, children, home, family. You cannot. And you cannot have private bank balance. We cannot put any money in our bank in our own name. No money. We cannot have any property in our name. Everything belongs to the public, you see. Okay, let's take some calls right now and find out what you all have to say this morning to the Swami. Line one, good morning. Line one, are you there? We had trouble with this line yesterday. Okay, let's try it. Line one. Line two, good morning. Uh, good morning. Line two? Yes. Um, I must. Yeah, you know, you're listening to your television set, and we have a 10-second delay, so turn down your sound and go ahead with your comment or question. Hello? Hello? Yes, what's your question? I'm asking about, uh, if Swamiji uh, talking about peace and uh, living a simple life, uh, how come most of the Indian gurus that come to America live such a wealthy life, you know, luxury life? That's a good question. What about Rajneesh in, in uh, Oregon? Rajneesh is not a Swami. He's a Jain. He's not even a monk. He's not. A, he was. I had lots of problems. Uh, even in India, several arrests, etc. So he wants to destroy our Swami order. He's not a Hindu. You know, he doesn't like like Sikhs and uh, him, uh, Sikhs and Hindus doesn't like. So he wants to destroy our Swami order. So he gives orange rope to everybody. So he's not a Swami. He's not a monk. He's not a yogi. He had lots of criminal records, and then he took to yoga just to till the yoga only to attract the people. But he's actually against to destroy. Our, our religion and our, our Hindu, Hindu religion. So you're not a fan of his, I think? No, no, no. Okay. Line 8, good morning. Good morning. My uh, comment and question is directed to your guest there, Swami. I would like to ask him, uh, could I join here in the States without going to India? Say again? Oh, yes. Can he join your group oh, without yes. going to India? Uh, we've got a center in Los Angeles, uh, in, in Sunset Boulevard. So it's called the... Uh, Sivananda Yoga. Sivananda uh, Yoga. Uh, Vedanda Center. I don't remember that. We'll, so, we'll be giving you the local number at the end of the show. Or you can come to our office in Canada. Or, uh, or you can go to Canada. Our form, we've got a... In Glassville, we've got a form, yoga form, very beautiful form in, in natural right. settings. And you, you live in Canada yeah. usually, most of the time, right? Okay, we'll give you that number okay. later. Line four, good morning. Yes, the mentality of the United States is one of the main problems of this. We have more personnel and more weapons stationed outside of our own country throughout the rest of the world than all the other countries in the world combined together have stationed outside. So it's up to the American people to look into their mind and their heart and soul and realize the American mentality is completely wrong about this matter. Well, I must say I agree with you, but then the Swami said he doesn't want to take sides. So. Yes, it is a human race. The, the problem is we are thinking only one side or other side. Now in the missile age, there is no meaning at all. Now you see, we are always take sides. We must remove this idea of that one side is wrong, other side is right. As long as it, we think that one side is right and another side is wrong, we'll have war. Definitely, you see. We must remove this idea that we are right or they are wrong, or they are right, we are wrong. This is the cause of the human problem. You know, in, in one of your writings that I was reading, I loved what you had to say, which is, 
everyone on this planet shares the same sun. We all share the stars. We all share the moon. That's not mine because I'm an American. It's not his because he's a Russian. It's it's everyone. Yeah. Same this. Our thoughts must. That's what make bound break the boundaries. Yeah, it? I love that. Okay, line one. Good morning. Hello, I'm Judy, and I my question is: There's so much anger on the part of government leaders. I'd like to know what uh, one does to advise people about uh, how to deal with that anger. Anger just personally or to the world leaders? When oh, the world uh, leaders. Yeah. I just tell us if I had small time, I will just give a very small fast story about the frog who lived in a well, and one day a cousin frog came from the ocean, and then. He said he has got a bigger ocean, which he never seen since end or beginning. But the well frog was not satisfied, so he went with his, his cousin frog to see the ocean and took the binocular to see how far the ocean goes. And he was terrified seeing the big ocean and came back. So our leaders, no matter who they are, presidents or prime ministers, they are living in small, tiny wells. They don't understand the infinite nature of God, the infinite number of galaxies there. Our planet Earth is nothing, and the galaxies are exploding every minute, every second. So what they understand about the world is not just like a tiny brain, you see. That's right. Fine, Ken. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, my question is, is that I like to ask this morning, what he, what he thinks of all our societies today? What would be the common mistakes done? I'm sorry. What are the most common mistakes made in our society? Is that the question? Yes, of all our societies, of all the people of the world. Of all. Uh, that is, they put it, we teach the children that you are a Catholic, you are a Protestant, you are a Hindu, you are a Sikh, you are an Arab, you are a Jew. This is the most horrible mistake we ever created, and that's what the situation is. We are human beings. Suppose a child brought in a Jewish family without an abducted by an Arab, or without knowing, and brought an Arab family. He will never know he's a Jew and vice versa. So this idea that you are Arab, you are a Jew, you are Christian, you are American, you are Catholic, you are Protestant, is only exists in your mind. But God never created this division. You created this division, and that's the yeah. greatest problem. And you know, I think that I think that one of the most wonderful things about traveling. Is that you realize the universality of of all? That's right. You know, I, yes, I'm there as an American in India, but but we're all people together. And by traveling and seeing all these different people, you realize, you know, we think our world, our America, this is it, right? There's nothing else yeah. but America. That I mean, we don't really think that way, but but I mean, internally, I think that I think that we do. Uh, not intellectually, perhaps, but but emotionally, it seems this is it. You know, this is what I'm concerned with: my drive to work, my this. And then when you leave this country and 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 meet so but many other people, only say the philosophical attitude will have that open mind. Otherwise, still you will you will travel as an American or Russian or Chinese or Indian, you mm -hmm. see, because you got a passport. You think, oh yes, I'm definitely belong to America. Right. <laughs> but also, when you do travel, there is a universal language. You know, you may not speak their language, but you are able to com communicate with people and ask for things. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Come and see us at your next trip. Oh, namaste. That's how it is. Oh, namaste. Oh, namaste. Okay, Ted. Oh, namaste.